Monday, did you get a chance to talk to him, lobby him a little bit? Yeah, we were able to, uh, to connect, spend a little time together. Um, you know, had some great conversations, and we'll see we'll see what happens here as we move forward. Did you have a relationship with him before Ryan, uh, or you know, was that kind of one of the first times you got to talk to him on an extended basis? Or? Yeah, I hadn't uh, hadn't been able to meet him before, so I uh, really enjoyed meeting him and his girlfriend and, and spending a little time together. And like I said, you know, it was nice meeting him, and uh, you know, I think he'd be a, be a good fit here. But we'll see what happens moving forward. Right, overall, how would you say the team? Everybody has improved from the start of the offseason program to where you guys are now. Uh, I've seen a lot of improvement. You know, just coming out. Um, like I said, last time I was up here, just new offense, working through a new terminology, new concepts, um, and everyone just getting on the same page with that. Uh, I've just seen a lot of growth. You know, we, we were able to work through some of those early mistakes, early miscommunications, and just being on the same page. And um, you've just seen those those mistakes decrease, decrease, decrease as as time has gone on here. So uh, really, really happy with the way our guys have worked. Uh, seen a lot of progress out of our younger guys and some of the veteran guys uh, as well. So, you know, really proud of, of the way we came out, worked with a purpose throughout this spring and feel like we got a lot better. What do you do now? And what, what do you do now specifically? And then what is what's important maybe for other guys to do to make sure you're ready for camp? A lot goes into it. You know, I think you got to get yourself mentally, physically, emotionally ready to uh, to go for, I don't even know how many weeks it is now from training camp through through the Super Bowl. So, um, you know, a lot goes into that uh, physically, um, being at your strongest, your most uh, well-conditioned, uh, being position specific, uh, you know, heading into training camp. That way you're not playing catch up in the early part of training camp. Um, mentally, uh, being on top of, of this new offense and, and new terms and, and the calls and everything that goes along with that. And then uh, you also have to take a little time to make sure you're uh, emotionally ready to, to handle the, the length of the season, you know, so some take, taking some time away, uh, recharging, recharging your batteries and, and coming in with a, a focus and an energy and ready to attack the season. How much have you enjoyed just being here every day through all of this and, and how important was that not only for yourself, but for everybody else as well? That was great. Like I said, we did a lot of good things throughout this spring, and uh, especially with this new offense, being able to just stack those reps up uh, with each individual player. You know, we had great attendance throughout you know this spring uh, from from every position. So, um, you know, stacking that that uh, that rep count, you know, up and up as, as a, the spring went on, being able to see multiple looks against these plays. Um, everyone can talk through it afterwards, watch the tape together. You know, see where we can can grow and get better, and just to see the progression. From day one in late May until you know now, you know a month later, uh, it's been a lot of fun, um, and uh, you know we have to build on it as we move forward. I know it's different guy to guy. Yeah, can you remember what it was like for you when you were starting out in the league in terms of developing your touch and getting to a point where you felt like you knew how to fit balls in and match kind of uh, the arc and the pace with the route and all of that? Yeah, it just kind of comes with time. You know, you you develop different aspects of your game and being able to make different throws, uh, different windows call for different throws, different plays, different concepts call for different throws. And, um, you know, for me, it was just going through that process and learning that not every throw has to be a, a ripped ball. You know, it's, it's, sometimes it's it's best to put a little touch on it, let your receiver run through it, make a soft catch and accelerate through it and, and go. So um, it's definitely a learning process. And, you know, everyone goes about that a little bit differently. You guys today, I'm, I'm just those throws against air to the receivers and one day last week seemed to have some trouble, especially early on, kind of timing, timing them up. Is that harder than it looks? And what are you working on there exactly collectively? Yeah, I think just getting on the same page. You know, it's not something that we don't do a lot of, you know, especially first balls to a moving, you know, receiver, you know, running a, running a go ball. It doesn't really uh, um, always come out perfectly, you know. But, uh, you know, we, we had some – some uh, some read route, a version of a read route where the angle is going to be dependent on the coverage. Um, one of them, I didn't do a good job of explaining the full the full look uh, to Chris, uh, just being on the same page there. Um, but we're growing through that. You know, I think uh, those got better as we got got a little uh, settled in there after the first couple on the go balls, and uh, and you know we're seeing some good balls and some good catches. So much turnover on the offensive line. How important has it been to have the continuity that you guys had all through OTAs? No, oh, it's huge. You know, like I've said several times, just being able to to all get on the same page, um, all 
um, be confident in, in the terminology that we're using and not be thinking, you know, decoding at, at the line of scrimmage, right? When they hear the play in the huddle, we need to break the huddle and go to the line confidently, all knowing exactly, you know, what's expected of us, and we're not uh, trying to figure out what's going on as we take the line of scrimmage. Is that group a little more settled than you expected it to be with your OTAs? I mean, with the lack of movement? Um, I don't know if I expected anything. I expected our guys to come out and work and, um, you know, we'll see as we as we go into training camp. There's going to be competition across the board. We'll come out here. We'll compete each and every day. And um, at the end of it all, you know, hopefully uh, we gel together as a unit. And um, that group's playing, you know, as one. Right. Aaron, Aaron Burrow in particular, on that note, you said he spent some time, obviously, with you guys in the film room too. Like, how do you feel like he's come about and just that leadership role too that he's taking on? Yeah, Aaron's done a great job. Um, you mentioned, you know, coming into the QB meetings at seven early in the morning. Uh, getting that extra time, making sure we're on the same page with, with the run game, with the mic points, with the, the pass game and the checks, um, and being able to then take that message into the, the O-line room and, um, and be the leader, the voice uh, of that room. So really uh, thankful for his work and proud of his work throughout this spring. Uh, the time he put in, obviously, uh, he's a talented guy and moves really well. Uh, but to see him wanting to take the step, next step and then doing it on a daily basis uh, has been a lot of fun for me. What has your experience been working with Charles London, and what are some of the ways you feel like he may have challenged you guys as a QB one? Yeah, Charles has been great. You know, I think uh, he does a good job of letting us know what's expected of us each and every day, you know, prepping us for the practice, for, for what's going in, you know, getting, uh, getting everything consolidated to where we're on the same page and we know, you know, what's, what's uh, expected of us as we, we go out here. And then uh, just holding us to that standard each and every day, you know, has some good drills he puts us through. Um, is able to uh, to see things the same way as, as Temp see it, which I think is huge. You know, when you have continuity in, in the way things are seen across the offense from coach to coach, coach to player, uh, it makes things a lot more clear and um, lets the standard be clear for everybody, players and coaches included. Ryan, sometimes you see an offense or a team install a new offense in an off season, and then you get to the season, there's kind of like a, some growing pains, a learning curve as guys are getting more used to that and things are coming together. Are you guys cognizant of that? Is there anything you guys are in particular doing Besides just really hitting it aggressively, trying to get it down now to, to combat coming in a little bit slow with the new offense? Yeah, we're trying to attack each and every day. You know, I think I mentioned it last time I was up here is, yeah, it's a learning process uh, of all getting on the same page terminology wise, concept wise, um, especially when you have choice routes and everything like that um, as a part of the offense. So um, being able to take advantage of these reps throughout the spring. Now when we get into training camp, take advantage of those reps uh, during training camp, and that way we can hit the ground running once we're playing for real. What are we talking with Colton uh, Dow, Ryan? Um, sorry, we're talking with Colton Dow out there. Uh, what have you seen from him, and is there anything like specifically that you've seen him progress in from day one up until now? Yeah, Colton's done some good things. You know, seeing him grow as a lot of the, the rookies have. You know, um, coming in, learning a new offense, trying to figure everything out—not just the new offense, but the NFL in general. And you know, rookies have the worst schedule. Uh, by far of anyone in the building besides the coaching staff. You know, they're, they're here early, they stay late. Um, you know, they're here for another two weeks right after this, you know. So, um, you know, your rookie year is a long year. You're taking in a lot of information on the field stuff, off the field stuff, and everything in between navigating, uh, setting boundaries. Like, it's, there's a lot that goes into it, right? So uh, being able to navigate all, all those things. But uh, as a rookie class in, the guys that we have, uh, drafted guys and undrafted guys, come in, they're working hard. Um, we're all getting on the same page, seeing the, the extra time that they're putting in in the afternoons come uh, and pay off on the practice field has been a lot of fun, and Colton's included in that. What's this offseason been, been like, and, and what changes or, or progress have you seen in his game this offseason from, from last year? Yeah, Malik's grown a lot. You know, he put a lot of work in uh, throughout the offseason. You know, got was able to throw with him a few times uh, in the offseason before we started out here, and um, you know, saw his growth, saw him pushing himself, and. Um, He's only continued that as we as we got out here and, and, and played, you know, full football in, in OTA. So uh, proud of him and, and the work he's put in. And it's it's fun to see a guy um, grow and it's hard work pay off. Any one or two ways and then when you talk about growing, any one or two ways that you can kind of I was playing quarterback, you know. I think you're, you're seeing everything uh, that you want to see um, when you're looking at a quarterback, a guy, um, you know, in command of the offense. He's throwing the ball accurately. He's playing fast. Uh, when you do those things, you, you you give yourself a chance and ultimately play good football. You guys throwing forward, and maybe how did that, all that come about? Malik? Yeah. Uh, we threw here. I, I stayed here this off season, so um, you know I was able to uh, to connect with him and throw a little bit here locally. Nationally, a lot of guys have, have written this team off already. In your mind, does this AFC South still run through this building? <laughs> Every year is different, right? Every year is different. Um, 
I'll say we have a lot of confidence in, in, in ourselves and our ability to go out and compete and, uh, and ultimately win games. You know, that's why we're, we're out here every day. That's why we um, are here voluntarily throughout the spring. Uh, we're going to push ourselves throughout this summer and, and come out uh, and expect to uh, win games on Sundays. You know, that's the only reason we're here. The uh, only reason we put everything we put into it mentally, physically, emotionally uh, is to go out and win games on Sunday. So um, there's a lot of confidence in that locker room, and, and we have to keep pushing that throughout the, the uh, fall in the training camp. There was a photo of you on social media with a pilot training certificate or something. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I was able to get my pilot's license. Um, you know, something that uh, I worked, spent a lot of time and, and a lot of effort to, to do. Um, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a little escape for me. Uh, something I have to be totally focused on and in the moment, be present in the moment. Um, but at the same time, it's an, it's an escape for me. So, um, yeah, it was a, a, lot of, a lot of hard work went into it, but uh, thankful I was able to get that and uh, excited to, to be a pilot now. Are you flying home after this? Uh, I will not be flying myself home. Um, I'll be flying southwest, so uh, <laughs> hopefully I can get a free flight or something for saying that. <laughs> have you had any teammates uh, have you, the, have volunteered to, to be a passenger with being a pilot, or how's that yeah. kind of gone? So yeah, there's a lot of guys that are curious. You know, We'll see if they actually, uh, like, yeah, 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 but we'll see when it comes time to, uh, to take them up if they're actually – if they're actually going to go, do what? Maybe Traylon, since he's had his own experience. Yeah, I, t I asked Traylon, and I said, hey, uh, you know, you've been on a small plane. You're ready to go again. He's like, ah, I think it was a one-time thing for me. So <laughs> I don't know if it's going to be Traylon or not. So it's allowed under your contract, though? It's not an issue? Yeah, I haven't had any issue. Um, you know, Brable's been supportive of it and, and been in communication with him about it. So, um, you know, he was trying to get me to go even a step up. So I uh, said, so that's a little bit out of my league right now. Uh, I'll stick to where I'm at. Yeah, my wife's supportive. She was uh, really excited to go. Uh, you know, um, I was able to take my family up uh, the day after I, I passed my exam. So uh, that was a lot of fun. Kids were, were really excited. And, uh, you know, I was a little nervous for taking my family up for the first time. You know, it's like there's this growing process throughout the flight training where at first you're nervous, right? You're coming in and you're trying to do everything perfectly. And, you know, as you get more comfortable, then uh, those nerves go away a little bit, right? You're still you know, making sure on top of everything, but you know, you're not quite as, as on edge coming in to land and uh, had the family in, in there for the first time. And I, I felt like I reverted back and got a little nervous, you know, uh, with my whole family on board, but uh, I was able to, you know, execute the landing and everything. And the next morning, my daughter and uh, son were like, daddy, can we go back on the plane again? You know? <laughs> so, so they loved it. And, uh, you know, glad to be able to share those experiences and, and really create family memories together, you know, through that. Thank you guys. I got cars bigger than I got trucks bigger than that thing. <laughs> did he what? I was gonna say, did he? How did he break that 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 news to you that he was getting his pilot's license? Are you having to find out? Or? No, just casual conversation, like learn how to fly. <laughs> Go ahead, Teresa. Mike, uh, this the last week of OTAs. Did some of the veterans maybe uh, you know? I'm thinking Derek and maybe Traylon. Were they? Did they? Some did they what, Teresa? I have no idea where they're at. No. I okay. mean, that they chose not to come to because voluntary. There you go. You want to try again, Teresa? Sure. You're in mid-season form. Hey, what can I say? I'm all, It's Wednesday. Um, DeAndre Hopkins, how did that visit go? And are you at the point? Do you stay in touch or you just let the uh, RAN and the front, guy, front office guys handle that? Well, we'll continue to kind of look through where we're at um, as we add free agents and everything else. We follow up and... You know, well, I don't think there's anything that's going to happen here today, I would imagine, but there's follow up every time we come and have conversations and we'll see where it goes. Just to clarify, this is the last day on the field with the team. And this is, yeah, this is the last day and the rookies will continue their program. We'll meet with them. It's, it's good that we'll have a chance to meet with the rookies tomorrow. There's some just really cool situations that came up today as just the point of just going through the process of not having a script and changing situations and things that come up. Um, penalties that may come up, defensive lineman jumping off sides on one side, wide receiver on the other side moving, explaining to them that, you know, only the receivers on that side are protected or reaching the ball, ball at the goal line, um, free play on third and two and somebody, you know, just cool situations that come up that we can teach from. So it'll be a good, I'm excited for that meeting tomorrow morning with the rookies. Period where he had a couple balls batted and picked and things like that. Can that sometimes be a better learning tool in a practice session, maybe than when things do go right? Well, I mean, I just think that it, it, what it, it shows you is that it's going to take all eleven, you know, to, to be able to 
to protect. And, and sometimes when, you know, you're trying to throw those timing routes on third and seven that, you know, you got to be in the right spot. You got ball can't get tipped or protection's got to be there. And, you know, when you throw the ball down the field, like we, we've got to make sure that as a receiver, like it's us or, or nobody. And so that's another situation that's going to get shown tomorrow morning with those rookies. Like it's your responsibility to, to make sure that that ball is not intercepted when we take a shot down the field. What do you want players to do from now until you start? Probably playing? the most critical five weeks of, of the, you know, of the season. Um, just in my experience as a player and a coach, like what, what you do away from here, um, you know, when things aren't planned or structured, you know, are you able to get into a routine? So what I want them to do is, is go prepare for, for a long season, a long grueling season of professional football. That, that's what I want them to do. And, so we tried to give them drills. We, we extended individual time today so that the coaches could review those drills that they can do you know, with their trainer or on their own or whatever they're doing, um, giving them some ideas. And then obviously I'm sure they're, whoever they're working out with will have some ideas and then the player will have some ideas. So that, that's what I want them to do, but it's the most critical five weeks of, of the season. As you guys have gotten better, especially like with this being the last day, you go back to the first day mm -hmm. and forward it to here. How do you think that's better? just the culmination of, of the spring, right? You install and first, second, then you go to third, and then you work the red zone, you know, different parts of the red zone. Um, so it was good to, to be able to see those situations change and the players and, you know, coaches coming in from the sideline, communicating, substitution. I thought the operation um, what was good. You know, we got a lot of great work in. We were able to throw the football. You know, the quarterbacks worked through a pocket and real application as opposed to just a bunch of seven on seven. So I think our conditioning improved. I think our football conditioning improved. We strung six or seven plays uh, together, you know, out there today. So I thought it was a good way to end. That time away maybe isn't where Christian Fulton has done some of his best work. Um, he, he talked to us today about kind of revising his offseason program and everything and understanding what you were saying about repeat offending. How, how do you feel like he's done in terms of his commitment to changing? Well, first of all, I wouldn't say that that's, you know, you, you, you stated when you started that the five weeks away was time that, you know, he hadn't done his best work. I, I, I didn't say that. Nobody else has said that. That's a, you know, personal opinion that I probably don't agree with. Um, but it, it's, you know, I mean, we ask every player that you train the way that you're going to play. And when you play, um, a skill position, you, you, you have to run, you have to go and open up and you have to change direction. And it's not five yards. It's whenever you have to cut. So there's reactionary movements, D linemen, like there, there's certain things that are going to be in the job description. And we ask every player. Um, that's why we do the drills that we do. That's why we practice the way that we practice because we want to practice the same way that we're going to play and to, to, to finish and, and to try to go get an extra block and protect the guy with the ball and all those things that, that we think help us win. So that's the most important thing is that you're thinking in a manner that you're going to train the way you're going to play. What makes you, do you feel good about where Christian is in kind of his adjusted approach? I mean, I think that'll all be determined by how training camp goes and how he performs on the field. Your lack of movement on the offensive line and as far as his bodies, a good indication that they're progressing the way you would have hoped that you were able to stick with that group? I thought that group, you know, I mean, I thought that group continued to improve, you know, throughout from, from the beginning um, of OTAs and phase two and, and, you know, some much better performances today out on the practice field than, than there were, you know, last week and, you know, that's all you ask for is that guys continue to, to improve, work on the techniques, and then translate it to the field. Malik said he's improved at letting it rip uh, and kind of getting his body in time with his brain, something you said a lot, talked a lot about this time last year. How have you seen him grow in that area? I thought he continued to, do, to get better. I thought just his attitude, his demeanor, you know, making little coaching points uh, with them and seeing that immediately translate. Um, him understand, you know, the the reason for saying that, you know, today was something cool that came up. You know, I moved the ball to the 35-yard line and said it was third and seven. And and it was Malik, and, and we converted. But following back up on him, I was like, hey, what was the situation? And it didn't dawn on him that we were kind of right on that 
fringe field goal, third and seven, you know, not trying to lose any yards, could potentially go for it on fourth down based on the wind and whether we feel like we can we can kick and make a field goal from that distance. And, you know, long story short, he converted. I mean, we converted. But eventually it's going to have to be all those things are going to have to trigger in a quarterback's mind, you know, pretty quickly as, as the ball's being set and guys are getting into the huddle and the, and the call's coming in, you know, they have to, you know, the quarterback has to think like, you know, I would and saying, you know, even if I take care of the football and I gain a couple yards and don't lose any, we can kick a field goal or put, you know, put coach in position to, you know, to potentially go for it. So those are great learning opportunities. And, and, and he, you know, very receptive to all those. Coach, when it comes to these free agents that you did bring in, like Aziz and Sean Murphy Button and Arden Key, like, to, to be possibly starters, how do you feel like they've gelled with this group? Because from an outsider's perspective, it seems like they fit. They are like, great, you know, and that's what you try to target in, in free agency. Kelly, you just, it, it's tough, you know, to, to not know some of these guys and have some some personal knowledge and, and experiences and a relationship with them. And felt great about everybody, everybody that's come in and, you know, worked and been a part of the team and just, let their personality shine and, you know, Aziz, you know, leading and, and Arden with his energy and, you know, all those things that guys coming in and, you know, that's how you form a team. But, you know, it's, you know, you got to be careful when, you know, when you do that and you, and you bring a bunch of guys in, they got to, they got to be the right guys. Mike, you talked before about how much you enjoy being hands on with guys and teaching fundamentals and things like that. When you played, you only played a handful of positions, but it seems like you're really into the fundamentals that, at 22 or 53 spots, however you want to phrase it, where did your love of learning that and working in that way with guys start? Um, I, I, I think it's just for me, it was a, I need a way to reach a play. You know I mean? That is a connection, right? So for me, you, know, you try to make a connection off the field, whether about their family or what they're interested in or you know, their charitable you know, endeavors, but on the field, you know, for me to get around and, and have a connection with a guy, I've got to know and have knowledge, right? So maybe it was, you know, when Tyler, when my son started playing O-line, you know, in the 10th grade is, okay, figuring out what that's supposed to look like. And, but I've always felt like as a player, if you know what the guy across from you is doing and what his job is, you know, maybe you can be better at your job. If I know how a tight end's supposed to block or what they're teaching him to do on blocking, then as an outside linebacker, I should be able to know that and understand that and try to use that to my advantage. Um, if I know how they're trying to set routes up and, you know, stem and attack leverage and, you know, then beat me across, whatever it may be, then I can try to use that to help me do my job. And that was always, you know, they're all mirrored positions, right? You know, I mean, there's a running back that's across from a linebacker. And so I thought that was always something I try to do as a player. And I you know, just carried it over to this. Thomas Oda Coyer since you got here oh, last man. year. Pro I mean, we've, you know, talked about it yesterday as, as a staff and, you know, had a, had a really nice play Monday, you know, in the red zone using his length. He's physically gotten stronger, he's moving better, um, understands the game better. I mean, just a, a fantastic addition to our, our team. He's just an unbelievable teammate. Um, love having him around, love having him in the building. So it's been really cool to see him improve, um, you know, and, and see where he can and try to find a role on our football team. But certainly one of the, the more improved players, Jimmy, on our football team. Will had a couple turnovers today, but how would you gauge his growth and development during OTAs, and what do you want him to focus on the next couple of weeks? Well, it's, I mean, he's improved. He's gotten better. I mean, there's a lot of good things. Um, you know, understanding when the journey's over, you know, making sure that we're, you know, moving out of the pocket and trying to keep plays alive and um, but but also making sure that it you know that the that the result isn't a, isn't a negative one you know it's one thing when defenses make plays it's another when you know we're reckless with the football and so there's there's sometimes a difference um, but I feel like just him in and out of the huddle or the things that we made adjustments on in the red zone I saw I saw that get cleaned up here today so I think it's just a daily improvement, a daily approach, uh, especially with the young quarterbacks. We're talking, about, we're talking about Colton Dow a little bit, just about how much studying that he does and how he approaches that. Have you seen 
a difference in him from the beginning until yeah, now? Yeah, Colton's gotten better. And I think once you once you learn, and there's a comfort level, we've talked about this, that you, know, you look at a guy like KB, there's a lot of comfort level. And so he doesn't use a whole lot of energy or anxiety before the ball snap. It's it's this kind of calm demeanor. And so then whatever energy he wants to exert, he can do it once the ball snap. Sometimes when you're straining to know where to line up or what the play is or what your job, you know, what your responsibility is, that's taking half your energy away before you even, you know, go and play. So trying to get him comfortable, trying to have him learn multiple positions on, on, on the receiving end, whether it's outside, inside, F, C. So, um, and, and that's gotten better. Is that the same for Skaronsky, another guy that's been moving around different, different positions? Doing yeah, different and, you know, Peter's probably just, I would say, further along in his football development, just having, you know, played in the Big Ten, played offensive line. Play, you know, I think Colton is still, you know, smaller school, and I think that there's, you know, he's going to continue to develop, and I think that he'll, he'll, get, he'll do that. You know, I think Peter's, you know, and it's probably a little different for O-linemen. You know, probably just kind of banging around in there. I think there's the coverages kind of change a little bit for some of these younger receivers and the looks and, you know, some of the detailed coaching points. You got this spot this field being ready? Hmm? Is the 25th report date or practice date, or is that not the right date? Uh, 25th is the report date. It finalize anything with the Patriots? It still looks like that's going to happen, or still that is going to happen. Yeah, that'll happen on our bye week. Joint practices during your. Oh, I'm sorry. I was I was thinking about the other. Um, third, right, right before the third preseason game. So Wednesday, Thursday, Tuesday, Wednesday, because it's a Friday game. Tuesday, Wednesday. So we come, we, we leave Minnesota, come back here. We'll have a day, get them some rest. Patriots will come in, two days of work, and then day before, and then we'll play the game, I think, Friday at 7 o'clock.